Hello and welcome to my channel Making Crafts. Today I am starting a new journal and hopefully you'll follow along with me as I create this journal. This is a totally different style journal than I've ever created. I had this style in mind I, um, for months now and I never got around to creating it with you all. I started to cut the papers and then um, stopped months ago. So we're just going to create the whole thing together. I've not tested it other than cutting the papers. That's the only thing I have done. So we'll Go ahead and finish cutting the papers together so I can show you how to do the papers for it. But I want to start first with the actual cover because um, I like to have the cover so I can, once I get the papers cut, I can just go ahead and sew it in and then we can start adding our pockets and different things to the journal. So since this one is a bit different, I'm going to do some things different. I'm testing it along with you so we'll be learning together. So if it doesn't work out, then um, We'll have to figure out how to fix it together and fix our mistakes. So I don't know long, how long this will take. I don't know if I can do most of it in one video or if it's going to take several videos. So we'll just see. Let's just get started and see what it uh, takes. So I'm starting out first with a piece of muslin that measures about five, I think, let's see, five by, well, it's about five and a half by 15. So five and a half by 15. And we're going to, um, this is going to be a smaller type journal too. So five and a half by 15. And so we're going to use uh, our fabric here. So I've got, I think these are 10 inch squares of fabric. And so what I want to do is I want to start out with this piece and kind of have it in the center here. And then I'll have, I'll add this one to the edge of each. So what I need to do is I need to cut this one at five inches wide and then I need to cut this one at five inches wide. So let me do that, and then I'll, I'll um, then we'll move on with the next part. So I'm just going to use the actual. Um, I can see the muslin through here, so that's what I'm going to use to just trim this down. It's just approximate. We're going to be adding lace and stuff and decorating it, so I don't think we have to worry too much about how perfect it is. Oh, I didn't think about that little edge there being rough when I trimmed it down. So we're going to have to think about that. Let me see if I can trim that off and just straighten it up a little bit. Already making mistakes, Susan. So here we go. I'm just making mistakes and having to fix it already. But you would think that I've thought about this enough that I wouldn't make mistakes. But I hadn't gave it a try, and I have been thinking about it. But I've really been thinking about the journal part and not the cover as much. But I realized that if we start cutting the papers, we're going to want to put the journal together. So let's get the cover made first. And I already have papers picked out for this one. So we're going to center that there. And I think I figured out, since this is 10, I'm going to need about a two and a half inch strip. But let's cut this at five as well. Now, if you really want to be precise, what you can do is you can um, get your rotary cutter out, like you do for quilting, and just you know, cut it then and it'll be straight. But I don't really worry about that when I'm doing a junk journal because I am gonna be adding more things to the cover. And so I kind of like the ragged edges on a junk journal, but you could cut it with a rotary cutter. I think that's what you call them and um, cut it straighter. I'm not gonna worry about that today. The scissors is hurting my hands trying to cut this. I probably should have got fabric scissors out instead of paper scissors to cut fabric, huh? I have my fabric scissors, but I keep those up because I don't want anybody to destroy them. So let me put this aside and this aside. And we have, now we have this one that's going in the center here. And then I need to cut off some strips to fit along the bottom here. So let's see here. We have that, so I think I will cut, I'm gonna cut a little extra so that we um, we have a little seam allowance here. So I'm just gonna cut a little extra there because I am gonna sew those together. So I need a little bit of a seam allowance and I will tell you the measurements once I get through cutting this, I will give you the measurements of what each piece is in case you wanna follow along with me and create the exact same size journal. And if you do follow along, be sure to tag me on Instagram and let me see how yours is coming along as, as we work on this together. Okay, so I'm going to pull out the sewing machine now because now we're going to take... Oh, I forgot to tell you the measurements. So the smaller pieces are measuring about three 
and a half by the five and a half. And then this one, of course, is 10 by five and a half. So let's get the sewing machine out. I'm gonna have to move my Dr. Pepper out of the way. And let's get it and sew this together. Okay, so I've tried to adjust the camera where you can see, but I also can see to, to sew. And I know the lighting is bad. Let me see if I can adjust that. There we go, that's a little better, isn't it? Okay, so um, that's what I'm trying to do is just adjust it where I can sew, but where you can also see what I'm doing. And I may not need this piece of muslin, but I, I was thinking with sewing this to the muslin just to give it a little bit more structure and to help me out with my sizes. And I may not have needed that. So what I'm doing here, I hope you can see, is I'm just laying, centering up the fabric onto the muslin. Let me move this out of the way just for a second so I can show you. So I'm just taking and centering the, just eyeball centering the uh, fabric to the muslin. And then I'm just going to take one of my strips and I'm just going to attach it. So I'm just lining the bottom edge of this strip up with the bottom edge of my muslin. And then I have, um, actually that's incorrect. I need to do it this direction. I need to get my, I need to have the right sides facing. So I'm just going to take and line these edges up of my strip and then I'm gonna sew down through here. Now I do have to change the tension because I've got my sewing machine set up during the holidays. I um, had the tension on seven for paper. So I have to turn the tension down for fabric. So let me do a little test piece here. Let me just cut a little, how about a piece of this muslin and just test to make sure that it is ready for fabric. I want to be more about two and a half inch stitch length. And let's take one more look and then we'll get to sewing. When you're going back and forth like that, you do need to set your, um, get your machine set up correctly. Okay, so now this is our edge that we're sewing. And then what we'll do is once we sew it, we'll flip it back down, okay? So let's go ahead and sew that edge. And I got a little piece of glue from somewhere. I'm gonna pull the sewing machine closer now so we can sew it. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew it through all three layers. Okay, I wanna make sure I got them lined up over here on this side of the muslin as well. And you could pin this if you wanted to. You, you definitely could pin it. I'm not gonna worry about it right now, but you could. So you can see I'm putting my presser foot against the edge here. That may not be making a big enough seam, seam, but that's okay. We'll have to see. We can shorten it if we need to, just trim the fabric off. Okay. And I know there's a glare there. I think that's the light on the sewing machine, and there's no way to stop that since it's on the machine itself. So then we just pull this down. You can see there we have part of our cover. So all this is gonna make sense because this looks really strange. Like I told you, this is a totally different style um, journal than I've done before. So when we get through making the cover, you'll understand more of what it is. So I'm calling this, um, and I'm really not sure what to call it. So I'm calling it a tablet style. Um, let me pull this down. So what you wanna do though, before I tell you what I'm calling it, you wanna make sure this is smooth you know, you've got everything smooth, and then you take and you wanna make sure you got your muslin lined up right, but you wanna make sure it's smoothed down when you add this one on top, so that way there's no wrinkles up underneath here under your fabric. And then you're just gonna put it in your machine again like we did before. Make sure it's all lined up with the edges. And then we're gonna stitch, and I am back stitching at the beginning and at the end. So I'm calling this a tablet style, flip up style journal. I have no idea what the correct name would be to call it. I don't think I've seen a junk journal this way, so I don't really know um, what to, to call it. I'm trying to move my mat. I'm sliding everything around, and sorry about that if it's bothering you. But I'm trying to get it where you can see um, what I'm actually doing. I don't think I need this sewing machine. Well, I'm gonna need it. Let's just leave it right there. But here is here is part of our cover. So when I say tablet style or um, flip up style, the cover is going to be like this because the journal is going to be 
a journal that flips up this way. So I want to show you how I'm going to do that. So um, now I just need to add my cardstock inside. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have cut out a sheet of paper. So this one measures five and a half by 11, and then this one measures five and a half by five inches, yes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna overlap these and glue them together, and this is going to help be um, sturdy up our cover. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue about a half inch wide across my paper here. Okay, and we'll just glue that together there. Probably shouldn't have it on my fabric. I'll get glue all over my fabric. And then, let's see, does that measure 15? Yes, do we, let's see if it measures the same. Yes, 15, about 15 and a half or so. We can trim some off if we need to, and I think we do. I think we need to trim it down to 15 and a quarter. So I'm getting my paper trimmer, and I'm just gonna trim off a quarter of an inch. So 15 and a quarter is what I need. Okay, oops, I think I did that crooked. Oh no, it's perfect. Okay, so this is going to go on the inside. And if you've seen me make covers before, I do this. I put cardstock on the inside of my covers. So then I'm just going to um, glue this on. And then we're gonna figure out what we want, what, what fabric do I want on the inside of my journal. So I found this piece of green fabric that I'm gonna use on the inside. So I'm just going to trim it down to match um, the cover that we've already made, the fabric cover we have already. And let's just lay it on here. So, and then we'll have to trim the edges down just a bit as well. So let's just trim this down here. Make sure I don't cut into my paper. I think I'm starting to cut into it. Oh, me. So, then we're just going to trim down the edge. Then we'll have our inside piece. Okay, so now we have our um, cover piece and our inside piece. And the cover piece is sewn to the muslin. So then we're just going to glue this here. So I think that will be fine like that. I may need to trim it off just a little. So I'm just gonna trim it right here. Okay. And that will fit inside the cover. So I'm going to just, you hear my kitty, she's, she's meowing. I don't think she wants me to be crafting. Okay, so I'm just going to take some Fabri-Tac and add it to the, um, to the cardstock here, and I know I'm off screen. Okay, I'm trying to do it like this, because I'm leaving my sewing machine out so we can use it in just a second. So I'm just going to add a little bit of um, this, well, I said a little bit, but it's oozing out, so it may be more than a little bit. I just want to get a little bit on here so that it holds my fabric down while I'm sewing. Holds it down for me so I can get this sewn together. So just press real good. There we go. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing to the back and I'm going to add my inside fabric to that. And it's kind of messy looking, but you know, this is a junk journal. We're supposed to have fun just doing this. We don't have to be precise. So then we're just gonna lay this fabric on top there. And I'm gonna try to get this fabric to cover the cardstock it does seem a little narrow at that end. It was a piece of leftover fabric. 
We can trim everything down in just a minute because I made it just a little bit large, so I may just trim it down just a tad once we um, get it sewn on. So then we have it together. So now let's see, is it hanging over? So we'll just trim a little off. There. And we have some hanging over the edge here. We're just gonna trim it down. I know I'm having trouble staying on camera. Maybe I should have put the sewing machine up while I did this part. Okay, so since I'm sewing through paper, I am going to go ahead and change the tension back on to seven on the machine. I hope that's not too much since it is fabric and paper, but we'll see. And then I'm going to just stitch around all four sides to stitch it down. So let's pull it over here. And we'll try to do that together. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna put the stitch length on a four. And then we're just gonna go along the edge here and then we'll trim everything up at the end. So let's see, about like this. I don't think that's my finest sewing, but it's working. <laughs> it's not my best work, but it's coming along. We'll see. It'll be good when I get done. Just when you get started in the first little phase, you're just never sure how it's gonna be. I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna trim some off right there, so I'm just gonna follow along the edge here of the paper. That's what I'm following along the edge of. Okay, so now let's just see how we're good, how we're going. And we have our cover. And I may need to take an iron and press it. So then it's going to fold over like this to make our journal. So I don't know yet that I'm going to trim all this off because even though it's crooked, I'm going to be adding lace. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's not on camera. So, you know, it's a little crooked here. But I'm going to be adding lace along there, so I'm not gonna trim any of it off yet. I'm just going to wait. I am trimming off the green sticking out here, but um, I'm not gonna trim any of that off yet because I am gonna be adding lace. Okay, so it's a little rough looking, I know, because of um, I didn't get the back perfect, but it's okay because we're gonna cover it up anyway with a lot of things, so it's not. this is just our base. And so I have this piece of... Um, doily here or something, it's a crochet project that was started and not by me, by someone else and I just bought it at a antique place. And I'm thinking, I had a certain way I wanted to, let me see how I wanna do this. I wanna make it like an angled, you know, like a triangle pocket and I'm just gonna add it here, um, kinda like that and I'm gonna cut it out. But let me go ahead and reset up the camera so that we can see what I'm doing because I think we're done sewing for now, and we can always bring the sewing machine back out. So hopefully this is a good angle so you can see what I'm working on. And then I'll zoom in closer once we have close-up work. But for this, I think we need to zoom out. Now there is a lot of lint and stuff on this where I washed it with um, a quilt, so I'm gonna have to get some of that off. But I'm thinking to do a diagonal pocket here. So hopefully this doesn't totally, I know that these things unravel when you trim into them, so I'm gonna get glue and add to it and hopefully it doesn't um, totally unravel. We'll see what happens. You all may be watching this and be like, oh my gosh, she has lost her mind. This is not gonna work. And you probably are right, but I have to try it. I mean, I, I got this for probably nothing. So if I lose it, I lose it. It may have been thrown in with something. I can't even remember. It's been so long ago and I, this is what I thought it would go with. So if it doesn't do right, it's nothing major. I'm not going to be upset. 
because I like experimenting. But I, that's the kind of pocket I want. So let's see if we can make it glue down. And, um, you know, I might could come back in. What do you guys think? Should I come back in and stitch it? Oh gosh, my girls are galloping around. Sorry for that noise. Um, they are really hyper. But I wonder if I should come in and once I glue it, should I stitch this or should I just glue it? Let's glue for now and let's see what happens, okay? Let's go from there. Oops, gotta get my lid off. So I'm just gonna run a bead of glue starting right here and just run a bead underneath it and press it in. And you know that bead's gonna, this glue's gonna string out and I'm probably getting it on my mat, but that's okay. That's what these mats are for, is to craft on, right? If we get it dirty, we'll clean it up. But that's what they're for. I'm not gonna stress that. So I'm gonna along this edge here. And this is why it didn't matter that the fabrics didn't all line up perfectly, which I don't, I'm trying not to stress that when I'm making junk journals. I mean, certain projects I do, if I have a certain idea in mind and I want it to be, you know, pretty perfect, which is hard for me. I try, I have a perfection tendency where I think everything's gonna be perfect. If it's not, I have to just start over. And I'm trying not to do that. I'm not tr trying not to stress myself. I'm trying to um, just enjoy what I'm doing. Enjoy crafting and don't be overly stressed. Okay, pressing that down. I'm getting glue all over me, but that's okay. We can wash our hands, right? Okay. So then I'm just going to add more glue here. Now, if you were going to wash this, there's no way I would do this. You know, if you're doing a project that you was going to wash, definitely couldn't do this because it wouldn't work. But, so as a quilter before, I've made quilts, and as, you know, a sewer, I guess, not really a quilter. I didn't really do a lot of quilts, but I did more sewing and clothes making and things like that. And I would have been like, there's no way this will work because you wash those things. But this is not going to get washed. This is, you know, this is going to be a journal. It's got paper in it. You're not, of course, you're not going to wash it. So, and there might be a piece of lace running along the edge there. I don't know. So I'm just going to line this up in case there isn't so that it looks good. And I think I want to put a little bit of glue on the actual doily here because I can't make a straight line since it's going to, um, since it's not straight. So I think I just went on the edge there so that this can be a pocket. And we are gonna let that sit for a bit before we do much with it. And I think what I'll do is, I'll give it time to dry, and then I'll come back. Even if we sew the book together, if I come back, I probably can flip it up and put it in the sewing machine and stitch over. Or I could just um, hand stitch it if I feel like it needs stitching. How about that? Let me know below, do you think I should stitch it? Do you think it needs stitching? Because like I said, this project is one that we're just doing together. I had an idea, but I don't know that I have it all figured out, you know, yet. So we'll just go along and see. Now this one, there's some edge hanging over. I'm not worried yet because I am gonna put some lace there. Um, I'm gonna have to turn around here behind me. I had some lace and see if it's still laying there so I can figure out what we wanna put here. So I don't wanna to go too pink, and I have some pink lace, but I think what I want to do is use one of these. And I love this one here, and I don't remember where I got it, but I love this one that has like that little frilly look to it. You know, the it looks gathered. You see what I'm talking about, how it's gathered, and it's really frilly looking. And I'm thinking that one along the bottom edge here. But this is kind of a, I'm, what I'm considering shabby chic. now. What I consider shabby chic and what you consider shabby chic may be totally different, but I'm going for a shabby chic look for this one. So it's what I'm considering shabby chic. So hopefully um, I don't disappoint you if with whatever I'm thinking is shabby chic. So what I'm thinking with the shabby chic is I'm thinking really girly, lots of um, lace and you know frilly things. So maybe we do that across there and then this across the bottom. And I just wish I could say, what do you think? And you could answer me now. But if I wait for you to answer me, we'll never get this done, will we? So I think I'm gonna do it. And, but then the sides look plain. What should, should we add something to the sides as well? Okay, before we add these two, we know these two are going there. Let's see what other lace, or here's, a, here's another little frilly lace that's kind of gathered. 
look, but it's bigger. Should it go at the bottom? Um, don't want to cover all those flowers up. No. So we're going to use those two for the bottom. And then, what should, should we put some down the sides? Here is some thinner lace. Maybe that could go down the sides. What do you think? I kind of like that. Is it going to be too much? Let's cut this piece off. Well, actually, what we need to do is we're probably going to want to wrap it around, aren't we, to the whole thing. So if we cut a piece, start here, because we're going to have to trim it off. It's not straight. And then we wrap it around to here. And we just trim off. Then we can trim more off as we need to. And let's do another. This one, oops. I hope it's enough. Hold on here. I got... Oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be enough. Okay, guys, I have no idea until I go back to edit where the camera cut off, but I was just chatting along and looked up, and the camera had cut off, so I don't know where it stopped or when. Um, maybe I forgot to turn it back on, but I thought I did. But I've been having some issues with it being full, the camera card being full, or the phone being full. So. I'll just have to show you what I did, and then when I go back to edit it, hopefully this all makes sense. So I went ahead and chose some lace, and I glued the lace down. I decided to glue some lace on the inside here, and I put in this doily pocket. Have no idea if that's even on camera either, so we will see in a few minutes. But when I go back to edit is when I'll figure it out. So I added this pocket, I added lace on the inside. I still need to go up under these edges and add more glue. But that's where I was so far, and then I've got to come back here and add lace to the back. Now, I was just crafting as I went, and I had never planned up to add this much lace to it. I knew I was going to add lace to the bottom, and I didn't plan for the sides. And so, I had to stop and adjust the camera. It was a little crooked. So, I had gone ahead and cut out some pieces from the kit that I'm going to be using. And the kit I'm using is from um, Line Dot Arrow. And it is, uh, I think, her Shabby Chic kit. But I will link below to her um, to her shop and to this kit because this is my design team project for Line.Arrow. So here's what I had cut out several weeks ago when I had thought about making this journal before I ever got this far to the cover. And now I'm wondering, is this going to look right? I was going to layer up pieces from the kit onto the cover kind of like that. But now I'm questioning, I do love the little girl on the front, but I'm questioning the, um, is that gonna be too much? I think I like it. I do think I like it. I think that's going to be okay. Um, should I tear this down just a little bit? Maybe I should. I'm gonna tear it down just a little. If I mess up, it's no big deal. I've got tons of music sheets, so I'm not going to stress it. This is a very brittle one, I just noticed. When I pushed up against it, it's very brittle. Um, I'm going to square it up just a little bit better than I did then. Watch me get it way too small now. But it won't frame it out. Then I'll be having to start all over. I'm thinking that's looking okay. I want to square this end up. If I Hopefully I don't tear too much off. So then I need to go back and ink it um, just with some brown ink. I'm just using what's left over on my sponge because I don't, this side was already inked because I don't want it really dark anyway. I just want a little hint of aging on it. And then we could take and add this and this and then this card in here to add just like a little lacy effect. Now, what would it look like without the music sheet if I just added the girl? Because then I could just add her here. I think it's a bit plain without the music sheet, so I'm going to layer it all up. I think I am going to straighten, do it straight, though. And then put this little edge on there as well. I think that looks good. And this is ephemera from that kit that I will link to below. So I'm going to add that to the cover with my Fabri-Tac. And I hope my camera doesn't cut off. I do apologize for that. There's no way to go back and redo it because this is the only, um, well, I really don't want to redo it either, make another cover. But also, I don't have a lot of this fabric, so I don't even know if I have more pieces 
of this fabric. So it is what it is. So I think it's per pretty self-explanatory that if you're following along and you're making this, you're going to want to add some lace somewhere to your cover. And it's pretty easy. Just use your Fabri-Tac. Just like we're adding this with Fabri-Tac, you'll just use your Fabri-Tac to add the lace. And I have other videos showing making covers. So, and you can see how I use Fabri-Tac to glue the items on. If, you know, you haven't seen those before. So I do want to, I think I originally thought about using this as a card to slide in, but when I look at it, it's about the same height and there's no way it's gonna slide in once I glue it down. So now I'm not gonna use Fabri-Tac on that one. I'm going to use my um, art glitter glue. I'm just gonna add glue along the back here. And I know I'm a little bit off camera. My chair has scooted, I do believe, so I'm gonna have to scoot back up. I'm scooting away from the table here. So I'm just adjusting this the way I like it. And then I'm gonna add more glue. We'll just glue it onto the music sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna press that down. And my washing machine sounds like it is taking off, taking flight, I believe, in there. It's awful loud. So I hope that doesn't bother you too. We have a lot of noises in this house right now. But I, if I'm crafting, I need my laundry going down so I can get something done. So how does that look? I like that. I like the cover. I may add more things to it, maybe a, a flower or something down in here. But for now, I'm gonna leave it like that because we have our pocket here. And so this is the start of our tablet journal. And um, so next we need to do the pages. So I'm going to clean up and then I'll pull out the papers for the pages. So here is the finished cover or so far how much I've done on it. And so what I realized was um, when I went to edit that my camera had shut off again at the end. So it's been a few days. I've had time to look at this cover and think about this cover. And sometimes, you know, once you do that, you see things you want to change. So I have some ideas of things I want to add to this cover. So in the next video, we're going to add to this cover, but we're also going to add the pages. And as you can see, the pages have already been added. It was when I went to edit, you know, I realized that um, I had no footage for that ending. So I thought I would come back. So you get a sneak peek on what the added pages look like. So I'm going to give you just a sneak peek so far of the pages. And so then tomorrow I'll come back and we will add the pages and hopefully start adding pockets to the pages if we have time. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.